The Salsa Warbird was the first ever gravel racing bike and it's gone through many iterations, each one a pretty significant change. In this video, I'm going to review the Salsa Warbird version 4. Is it more evolutionary or revolutionary? Find out in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers and if you're new to the channel, if you love gravel bikes, bike packing, the supple life, then you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. The Warbird platform is one that we are super familiar with. Uh, we are huge fans of the Warbird 3. We've been riding the aluminum frame and carbon fork version for the last couple years and we love it as a general road riding bike, as a unloaded gravel bike, and even as a lightly loaded mixed terrain touring bike. And if you're a fan of the channel, you know that the only thing I wish they would have changed on that bike was to allow clearances for 650B tires. So in version four, they do offer a 650B version and also a lot of changes. So let's jump into it in this review. Version four comes in all carbon all the time. There is no more alloy uh, options. It comes in a bunch of different flavors. There is one 650B one. The other bike ship with a 700 by 40 millimeter tire. And interestingly, the 650B ships with a 47 millimeter tire, which the uh, outside diameter is only only equivalent to 700 by 28. So a pretty significant change in uh, overall tire diameter. This is kind of important to point out because as I've noted in previous videos, when you make a tire diameter jump that big, it does have effects on handling. So when you're listening to this review, remember, keep in mind that I am reviewing it from the perspective of running it with those 650B by 47 millimeter tires. And the ride could be actually significantly different with the 740 millimeter tires. I unfortunately didn't have a wheel set that would fit on this so I could test it out in both configurations. So this is purely the 650B review. Drivetrain is SRAM Force. One by 42 tooth chainring in the front and a 10 to 42 in the back. So at least you get one to one. I think the bare minimum for a bike I would consider loading down with stuff. This bike had hydraulic disc brakes. Again, it's shipped with the 650B tires. Uh, the wheels are tubeless compatible. Handlebar was the Cowbell Deluxe. I think I actually would have preferred the cow chippers to the cowbells just because of the slightly more flare in the bars. The saddle was a WTB Volt, which was, you know, okay. So for the more significant changes, the fork is completely different. It actually has three pack mounts and can also support low rider bike racks. So if you'd like to front load your bike, uh, you can do it with Warbird version four. Interestingly, however, in the fender mount hole, uh, it was clearly labeled, at least on the demo sample I have, you were not to use it for a front rack. So I don't know if that eliminates the possibility to run something like a rando rack, which would be kind of a bummer because I think this bike would be uh, a great platform for kind of off-road randonneuring. In the rear of the bike near the dropouts, there is a uh, eyelet there for mounting something. Uh, I'm not sure if it's rated enough to mount a rack. It might just be a uh, fender mount. I'm not quite sure. I have to follow up with them. And the reason I say this is because near the uh, seat post, there isn't any eyelet uh, to put the stays of a rack. So if you were to run a rack and if it's something that they would actually recommend, you'd have to get a seat post collar with those eyelets. Another big frame change is the sizing. Completely different. They've introduced half sizes. So if you ride version three Warbird and try to guesstimate uh, via the size you currently ride, uh, you might be wrong and it would be worth your while to go into a shop and actually throw a leg over one. Uh, for example, I'm solidly a 52, 53. Uh, I've been riding the 53 Warbird demoed the 52 and a half and it felt strangely short to me. Uh, I would definitely have to go with the next size up for it to work. So sizing, completely different. So keep that in mind. Uh, overall on our scales, uh, it weighed in just under 20 pounds. So how does the bike ride? Is this the 650B Warbird of my dreams? Well, it's kind of complicated. I love the ride of Warbird version three and not saying that I don't like this one, but it's it's different. It is a different bike. So if you're expecting a version three ride with just wider tires, that's actually not what you're getting. The front end handling I felt is overall a little bit more stable than a uh, Warbird version three. It loses noticeably uh, a little bit of responsiveness in the front. Not to say that it feels like a traditional touring bike in the front by any means, but it does not have that same quickness as version three. And the same goes for the rear. And everything in the responsiveness department has been slightly dialed down. In my first look video, I kind of described it as somewhere between Warbird version three and the cut 
cutthroat. So one way to look at it is that it's kind of like a cutthroat light. You get that stable handling characteristics, uh, which is great for, you know, descending or a really long gravel endurance event where you're getting sleepy and tired and you don't want to be on top of the controls. This bike will handle a lot of the steering for you. So it's actually an interesting geometry change. I think some people uh, we'll get it, we'll love it, and other people will be kind of turned off by it. I'll give you a quick example. When we rode through the Kanza uh, earlier this year, we had the choice between uh, Warbird version 3 and the Cutthroat. Ultimately, we decided to go with the Cutthroat because we knew that we were going to be the type of rider that was going to be out there for a long time, going to be tired, going to be fatigued, and didn't want to wrestle with the bike. So we actually went with the less responsive bike because for our ability and how we were gonna tackle that event, that made more sense than something that felt fast but would require more management when we were tired. And I think Salsa kind of responded to the fact that you know a lot of people that do these gravel events are there to endure and they've really tweaked the geometry so that it better matches uh, what most people experience on a gravel course, which is kind of slogging long miles when you're tired and for that Kind of riding you don't want a bike that you have to you know micromanage all the time that said if you like a racier feel something closer to uh, a road bike or a cross bike this bike might let you down a little bit i think warbird version 3 uh wasn't uh, a road bike by any means but it did have a fair amount of snap and version 4 kind of mellows that down so depending on what you like on the bike uh where you sit on the fence between responsiveness and stability you may appreciate these changes or you may hate these changes. When I was testing the bike, I did mount some front panniers on it uh, just to see how it would handle and it did pretty well. I think the front end geometry makes sense for uh, front loaded touring. It felt a little on the floppy side, you know, it's not doing the whole uh, low trail rando thing, but pretty good. I would definitely stick to lighter loads if you were going to front load tour this bike because you don't want to just absolutely kill the feel of the ride. So I think version 4 is definitely an interesting evolution in a lot of ways. But I gotta say, I kind of missed that slightly livelier feel of version 3. And again, I want to reiterate that these are my impressions riding the 650B version. And I suspect that the bike handles actually pretty differently uh, when you have 700 by 40 millimeter tires in there. From my experience, you know, I did that conversion with my Salsa Via, same exact thing. I replaced a 700 by 40 and I put some Compass uh, RTPs on there and the bike generally felt noticeably more stable. Everything was just like sunk down a bit. You felt more planted, which was good, but it did take away some snap from the Via and I, and I suspect that's kind of what's going on here with the 650B Warbird version 4. So what do I think? I think it's a fun bike. I think like I said if this was available when we were doing Dirty Kanza this would have been the perfect tool for the job. A little bit more chill than the Salsa Warbird version 3 but a little bit more responsive but had the mounts to put uh, water bottles on the fork that borrows from the Salsa Cutthroat. So it's really splitting the hat here right down the middle targeting the endurance gravel market. So overall, I think for me, it feels like a completely different bike than version three. More useful, less racy, not what I was exactly expecting, and also a big change to the Warbird line. Uh, I'm curious to see you know, if you're a previous Warbird owner and you've thrown a leg, or if you've purchased a new uh, Warbird version four, what your thoughts are, leave those in the comments below. If you guys have any other questions, uh, you know, leave them in the comments, I'll be sure to answer them. And if you like content like this, consider supporting the channel. You can do that with the PayPal, Patreon links, by buying a supple t-shirt, or by buying some new watercolor postcards I just posted. Uh, check it out if you wanna you know, keep this content going. Every, all the information's in the uh, description below. And as always, keep the supple side down.